Right, so we've um, obviously discussed protein. Uh, we went through whey protein, we went through casein protein, and obviously the different traits it has and why it benefits our training. Um, another product I want to talk about now, which I think is massively underutilized in the fitness world, uh, especially with strength training as well, and that's creatine. Um, if you're an athlete or anyone who takes the gym seriously, creatine is probably one of the best and legal things you can take to ultimately improve your performance in the gym. Um, I'm going to break it down a little bit for you because a lot of people get a little bit confused with creatine. Um, to skip all the fine print, the one you want to go for is creatine monohydrate. Um, this is the best and fastest absorbing creatine you can take and it's actually proven to be the best as well. So although there are other types of creatine, which I'm not going to go into, creatine monohydrate is probably the best one you can take. Um, so let's sort of talk about why we take creatine. So first of all, our body naturally produces phosphocreatine. Um, so when you're training, let's say again, I use bicep curls as an example. When you get to sort of set uh, rep 10, 11 or 12 and you start to feel fatigue in the muscles, that's because the phosphocreatine levels are running low. As soon as that happens, fatigue kicks in, we have to stop our set. Now, if you were to incorporate creatine into your training, what it does is it fills your muscles with more creatine levels, optimizing your creatine levels, which means you can train for harder and for longer, which ultimately, especially with strength training, is going to be great for you because the more intense we can train and the heavier we can lift, the stronger we're ultimately going to get. So that's one of the main benefits of creatine. Now, in terms of when you should take creatine, lots of people tend to get confused with that too. There is no real set time. You can take it before you train, but you can also take it after you train. So you can take it with your, with your protein. A lot of creatines these days are unflavored, um, and you don't need to take a massive amount. Normal sort of dose of creatine is five, mil five grams, which is roughly a teaspoon. So add that into your shake. If you've got uh, a banana whey shake, for example, and you put the creatine in it after you work out, you're not going to taste it, you're just going to taste banana. Um, and it will probably get absorbed maybe a little bit quicker um, when your insulin levels start to spike after you train and things like that. Um, so that's one of the main benefits of creatine. So another thing I want to talk about regarding creatine, um, and again, a little bit of confusion, is loading. There's a lot of speculation around should you load or put extra creatine for the first five to seven days to optimize your tolerance for it. In my personal opinion, it's something you can do, but I think if you were to take five grams consistently every single day for 30 days, you'd still build up a, a relatively good tolerance and it's much easier to do. The only problem with front loading or putting too much creatine in your body is creatine without enough water can cause severe cramping. So if you have a manual labor job or you're working outside or, or, or doing whatever, and you're not taking adequate amount of water on, which is quite common, and you're lifting heavy things, you, you can cramp up a little bit. Um, so make sure you take minimum of three, preferably four liters of water a day with it, and it will, the water will help aid flush, flush the creatine through the system so you're not cramping up. So with regards to loading, like I said, if you wanna do it, it's not a massive deal, but I would preferably say take five grams a day, every day for 30 days, let your body get used to the consumption of creatine, and then after you've done that, three to five grams every day is gonna be perfect. Thank <laughs> you.